Hi there everyone and welcome to uh, this sort of part episodes if you will, um, so this is going to be part one of however many I don't know, so this is going to be my fourth episode um, in total of my journey into the Royal Air Force. Um, Today is going to be a bit of a different one in comparison to what I've been doing before, um, if you have been following my channel you know I mentioned this in the last episode, in episode three, um, in which I spoke about I'm going to basically make this video when my fitness date has been set, it still hasn't been set. Um, my medical documents are going to be re reviewed a second time for some weird reason, I don't know why, um, on the 30th of November, and I'll just cut a sh long story short, there is literally nothing on the medical, I've got a copy of the medical documents myself, I've read the notes, they literally just state when I felt low and depressed, when I came out of it, no, you know, nothing major there, when my shoulder was dislocated, went to A&E, but no major problems, that is literally a, in a nutshell of what they said, and then they need to check over it a second time, so just a joke but it is what it is um <clears throat> okay so before we actually jump into the core of this video i just want to quickly state a few things records firstly you know what i'm going to be stating in terms of the actual physical element of exercise the dietary things like that is all based around me i have found what works for me this is what again i learned a lot of this fortunately due to my my bodybuilding experience you have to find what works for you you can't just take something off the internet and it'll work sometimes you can get lucky and it does um, you know, I did that with the bodybuilding and I still stick to basically, I found a guy that I, I not aspired to be like, but I liked the way his attitude was, his body was, and I wanted to sort of bring my body as much as I can to that. I'm not to his, but my own version of that, it makes sense. And fortunately it did work out a lot of it, but I changed a lot of the exercises that makes sense. So it's the same concept, you know, if you have, if you've got, if you have no idea what you're doing, you know, take, take, take a fitness plan and then just chop it and change it to your, to your suiting, if you will. Um, you know, in regards to diet, I'm not a nutritionist, not a biologist. It just works for me. Um, although I do hear some nutritionist and biologist advice, and I do wonder what book they were studying from because it clearly doesn't work. Um, but hey, you know, I thought I'd say that for a record. So, on the last note, the way I'm going to uh, structure this video is similar to the ones before. I'm going to talk about sort of day one to seven on my main physical element of the fitness plan, then talk about diet and other things towards the end. So without further ado, let's crack straight on with it. So day one for me is endurance, okay? And that is a 30 to 40 minute, um, 30 slash 40 minute sort of walk, jog or run. So the reason why I don't really have a set specific one is like the RF fitness plan is because I have found personally that day to day, you know, you can never mimic or copy sort of you know what you did the previous week or the previous day or whatever the case may be because every day is different you might have had a fantastic week last week you know every day was going good you know your running was just spot on your strength training was spot on you know whatever the case may be um, and you not only was spot on you exceeded what you thought you was going to do and you try and take that sort of mind frame into the second week but you know you're just not feeling it you, know, you might have had an argument with your partner or your family and just things are not going the way you want um, and then you're feeling down, and you know, you're struggling to keep up with that. I know there is a lot of videos out there where they're like, you know, you take your heart out and talk to it and you tell it, this is what you got to do and then shove it back in, which there is, you know, the, 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 the main message of that is true, but the concept in which they're portraying it is so wrong. Um, so basically what they're saying is you've got to push yourself in when you don't feel like it. That is definitely true. Um, so the way I do it is... <clears throat> But before I run, I don't literally do this, but in my sort of sort of second nature, back in my head sort of thing, I sort of look at, okay, did I sleep well that night? Um, have I drunk enough? Um, you know, sort of every, maybe I've slept well but didn't drink enough, or maybe I've drunk enough but didn't sleep well. You know, there's always different factors into it. But I would take sort of miniature things into account, then I'll take the whole day I'm feeling, even though I haven't slept well or, or drunk a lot, but I've had a really good day. Like, work's been great, you know, I've been... You know, me and my partner has been great, but whatever the case may be, I feel like I can do this. Then I'll take more towards a higher jog or higher end run for 30 minutes. Um, obviously, taking into account my actual physical level as well, because you can't do, you know, you can't do a David Goggins and sprint to Mars. I can't remember what cartoon that was. I saw it uh, uh, on YouTube somewhere, and uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not at that physical level. So even if I feel really good and I can really challenge myself, if I know that I can do a medium jog easily, well, I wouldn't say easily, but relatively okay at you know, 30 minutes, then I'll push it to a high jog to a low run. So I've always, you know, just take it into account. So it's not a weakness thing. It's not a pessimistic um, thing either. It's more of a realistic. You, the, la the, the, the reason why you don't want to do that is because I have found that when I've had a good week the previous week and then I, uh, then I sort of, even though I know I'm not in that mind frame, I'm actually in the worst place, 
that I try and mimic that, I end up just failing, and that's the worst thing you want to do. You know, a good th- the, the the number one achievement is take putting your shoes on, going out there, whether you're in the gym or whether you're in you know out on the street, you're going for it and you're really putting the work in. That counts for everything. Okay, but the last thing you want to do is end it after going through all that struggle and you know putting yourself through whether it's thirty minutes, hour, ten minutes, whatever, um, and go home feeling defeated. That's the last thing you want to do. So if I'm feeling really crap and I know my sort of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that sweet spot because I find sweet spot is where you're perfect at sort of pushing yourself while maintaining it at the same time. Um, I'd say my sort of medium place, so a little bit just behind that. Um, I might drop it to either that level, keep it at that level if I feel like I can, I can do it, or I could go to the lower form of it. Because at the end of the day, like I say, you you want to go home feeling like you've actually did it. Even though you might have, let's say, you dropped it to the lower end and you did it, you did the 30 minutes consistently, and you didn't you know, you know, didn't hit nowhere near or you know anything close to what you did the week before, at least you hit it. Okay, that's the most important thing. So please keep that in mind. Um, you know, you're going to pass with this. This is always going to be. There is obviously some physical element. And I'll talk about that a, a bit later as well. So day two for me is strength training. So that is circuit training. That is sit-ups, uh, sit-ups, squats. Uh, sorry, no, push-ups, squats, sit-ups, lunges, uh, planks, and dorsal raise if I was to go in order. Um, that is in the RF fitness plan. So obviously that will change uh, sort of week to week. Or maybe if I find the sweet spot. Again, the sweet spot is where I can push myself but maintain it at the same time. Um, until I find it getting easier, then I'll up it. Um, so that will be day two. Day three is something called fart leg training. So I'll spend a little bit of time actually explaining what that is. So if you are a runner, you've been doing it a long time, if you've trained for marathons, you will know what fart leg training is. Um, if you don't know, basically fart leg training is, um, if you was to actually go to week 10 or week 12, I know it's on week 12, but I don't know when it actually be- begins on the fitness plan, on the RF fitness plan, there'll be some parts of the running area where it say, you know, X, you know, X amount of minutes run uh, plus a one minute rigorous to a one minute you know less than rigorous. I don't know what, I'm, what the right terminology is for ten minutes in total, so five on each. Um, that is, in other words, what fart leg training is. It is a fantastic um, endurance builder. I would definitely recommend doing it. Um, for me, I obviously run in the street. I did actually do a lot of gym, and I've recently changed in the past couple of weeks um, to street training. I'll talk about that uh, towards the end and the reasons why. Um, and yeah, that that is a killer. That's a really good one. I definitely recommend doing it. So the way I do it is I call it lamp post fart leg training. So for me, I do a one to one ratio. That's a one part jog to a one part run. Um, and basically, what I do is when I start off, I'll start off obviously at a lamp post where I'll stretch out. I'll find lamp post to quickly stop out, stretch out, get going, start off a jog. As soon as I will go past the next lamp post, that will turn into a run. When I get past the next one, it'll drop back down into a jog. You know, so on and so forth. Um, and I, I do different ratios as well. So if I find myself getting tired, you know, because I do it, I do it fifteen minutes between fifteen to twenty minutes. I'm, I sort of do it for. I think today I did it today. I done it for about eighteen minutes, I think. Um, so again, between fifteen and twenty, that's where I find my sweet spot. So I stick within that. Um, and yeah, sometimes if I find myself going up an incline or I'm going up a steep hill, I would do a one to one to one ratio, which is a one part walk, one part jog, one part run to a one part jog, one part walk. So instead of going, you know, walk, jog, run, walk, jog, run, you're sort of doing that, I go walk, jog, run, jog, walk. Yeah, you know, walk, jog, run, run, jog, walk. You, you get what I'm saying. So it's like a triangle if you imagine it on a graph or whatever. Um, I do that, I find that gets me up hills much quicker, much easier and more effective. Um, but again, that's just personally for me. You can chop and change it. You could do a two jog ratio to a one part run. If you want to do a, you know, I wouldn't say a one part run because that's, that's not that's a run. That's not a, that's not a um a uh, uh fart leg training. Or maybe you could do a one to one, which I've heard people do, which is a one part walk, two part jog to a one part run. Or you know, it could if you really want to push yourself, it could be a one part jog to a two part run. It could be a one to two ratio, whatever the case may be. Um, so again, you can chop and change that. Find what works for you. I just personally found that works for me. Okay, so day four, um, it goes back to circuit training, so the same as day two. Day five is the same as fart leg training, so I do two circuit training days and two fart leg training days during the week, and then day six is a mixture day. Um, basically, I use day six to sort of catch up on anything I sort of slacked on or failed on. So, for example, let's say um, on my running, specifically, whether it's the 30 minute or the fart leg training, I've just been not hitting it. I found myself walking more than I wanted to, my breathing's out. Then I might go and do a 40 minute low impact jog, even though I, don't, I know I don't use that, but I'm just trying to give you a context. Um, it's sort of like a sort of rest day ish, so I don't do it as intense, 
but just to sort of give a bit more positive mind and just keep that fitness going because you felt like you slacked that week to keep it up. Um, same thing for circuit training. I felt like my running's been good, but my strength has been bad. Then I'll do some strength exercises in the gym or whatever the case may be. Um, and then day seven's a rest day, and that's basically uh, my my physical fitness plan. So I just want to quickly touch on, you know, in regards to the sort of day seven is a rest day. Look, there's obviously seven days of the week. Yesterday was my day three, I believe. Yes, it was day three. I had a rest day. Okay, I get one rest day, like one rest day token, whatever you want to call it. Okay, um, because I just felt it was a Friday. I was gonna have a pizza. I know if I, I if I eat shit, then I'm gonna perform shit. But it was a day off. I wanted to enjoy myself, so that's what I did. Um, and then basically till seven days on from that point, I will then have a rest day. Or if I want to continue on do like eight, nine days and have a rest, like whatever the case may be. But I don't do it any less than a week, if that makes sense. So what was it yesterday? It was Friday, wasn't it? So I could either have a rest day next Friday or Saturday or Sunday, if that makes sense. Um, but I'll try not to push it too much because on my new job, I basically changed job as well. Um, I'll walk a lot, so I won't get into that now. That'll be another video for another time. Um... Okay, oh, one thing I did forget to mention, on my circuit trains, I do them in a gym. Um, I don't know why, I just find that when I try and do it at home, I really struggle to do it. Um, I feel claustrophobic and I struggle to breathe. I don't know why, it's very weird. Um, my house is not necessarily too small, it ain't like giant almost, um, but it's just a normal size. Um, but I just find, you know, the gym is a great atmosphere. You know, it's a very, you're not distracted, and I just feel like for me, that's, that's, the, the, best, that's the best thing for me. And also, when I do my circuit training, I do two muscle group exercises as well. So, for example, on day two this week, I've done chest and arms. Um, there's no practical reason for that. I mean, I guess you could say, obviously, chest exercises are more for push-ups, um, which is true, but that's not the reason why I'm doing it. It's because I just miss my bodybuilding days, and I just sort of want to get back into it again um, because I do really miss it. Uh, so, and then, like, on the second circuit training, which I'll be doing tomorrow, I think it's shoulders slash traps, shoulders, traps, um, area, and triceps. So, again, then the following week, it might, might be back, it might be quads, whatever. Um, okay. So, basically, that's, that's what my fitness plan is. So, in terms of diet, I'll quickly explain it, but I'll probably spend quite a lot of time uh, on this. So... In terms of diet, for me, <clears throat> I don't have like, you know, a breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know, any in-between in snacks or whatever. I just have a 80-20 uh, ratio. <coughs> oh, bless me. Or percentage ratio, whatever you want to call it. So for me, that is 80% protein fats to 20% carbs. Okay, so I am on a sort of a keto sort of carnivore diet more than anything else. I'm not strict though, again, I'm not going for a marathon, I don't have any lifestyle changes that I'm aiming for, I said I already had a pizza yesterday, so I do have one cheat day of the week, um, which was yesterday for me, but I can sort of take that whenever I want, uh, but I mainly focus on eating as whole as possible, and I know, well I say whole as possible, natural, I like using the word natural, because the problem is when I hear, you know, you listen to the RAF, you listen to these bits, and they go, you should eat whole foods, it's like, well what is whole foods? Because some people go, well, bread. Well, bread ain't whole food in my mind. Whole foods to me are natural foods, things that come from the ground, things that came from God's earth, okay? So carrots, potatoes, you know, or, or the animals that are in this place. So, you know, pigs, beef, you know, whatever. Or, uh, not, obviously, pigs are not beef, but I'm saying cow, beef, you know, pigs, pork chops, whatever. Um, so that's what I focus on the most. So for me, it's just, and I eat a lot of animal fat, okay, I cook all my meat in tallow, or also known as beef dripping, uh, you know, there is a lot of controversy out there, oh, you know, fat's really bad for you, this, that, and the other, but the, the problem is, the reason why I do this is because when I was in bodybuilding, obviously I studied nutrition quite a lot, um, because nutrition is going to be a, play a big part in your sort of your mental health as well as your physical health as well, believe it or not, um, so if you're feeling absolutely shit all the time and you eat shit, then, you know, the big elephants in the room you need to sort of look at. Uh, but, you know, I found in terms of energy sources, your body uses two energy types. You've got carbohydrates, you've got fats. Your body will go, turn towards fats, generally speaking, first, and then it will turn to carbs. Now, some people go, oh, it's because fats are easier to burn, so they use them at short-term energy bursts, and then carbohydrates is long-lasting. I don't think that's necessarily true. Obviously, I'm not a biologist, but from my experience, I don't find that true. Um, I've heard from certain people that when you eat carbs, your blood from your brain basically gets sucked out of it because it takes so long to process it. All your energy is going out. That's why you feel tired when you eat carbs. So 
I've changed to more of a high fat diet, natural fat, obviously no processed fat. I know I ate a pizza, but again, that's, that's cheat day. I'm, these don't include cheat days, they include natural days. So for example, yesterday I had pork chops with half a slice of onion um, for sort of a pre-workout snack. Uh, again, I don't have a particular pre-workout snack all the time. It's, if, if it's a dinner time, that's my dinner, then I go and do running or whatever case afterwards. Um, breakfast, I usually do tend to have the same, not for a nutritional standpoint, just because one, I like it, and two, I don't really like many other stuff, so I eat no cereal. I would say never eat cereal. If it's, you, know, you read all the brands, this sort of whole grain, shredded wheat or whatever, do not eat it, it is shit. Okay, it's processed crap. You know, shredded wheat didn't come on a little stalk, did it? So don't eat it, okay? Um, or Crave or whatever. I always have um, about four to five eggs. Um, I usually, well, it depends. Sometimes I have a scrambled egg. Sometimes I have a bacon and egg omelet, which is lovely. And I know bacon has got, you know, uh, sort of, preservatives and other things like that i can't win with everything but you know they are not that many on a bacon in comparison to like i don't know super noodles or whatever um and then i have about three four five six rashes of bacon you might guys think this is extreme but you know again my diet is very heavy based on fats and protein so that's why i eat a lot um you know two pork chops i think is something like i don't know 20 probably about 30 to 40 grams of also 30 to 40 grams of um, protein and like I think 20 I think about 19 grams of fat or something like that uh, and you know I just love onion onions my favorite uh, vegetable so I always have a lot of red onions and sort of normal normal onions whatever they ones are um, they're like my sweet treat if you will for dinner time so yeah um, other than that though that's basically it um, I don't necessarily sometimes have three meals a day I know some people like to macro count and go absolutely nuts I'm not training for a marathon Okay, so I don't macro count personally. I just make sure that throughout, across the day, as long as it's 80% fats, whether that's a one meal or whether that's six meals, you see what I'm saying? I just keep the same consistency. Um, now, for some people, carbohydrates work. For me, it doesn't really. I don't, it doesn't affect me as much as others, um, but it, it, I don't think it's very good for you, okay? Because you've got to remember, when, when you burn uh, carbohydrates, it turns into glucose. Now, glucose is an energy source, but the problem is, is that glucose, if, if you think of, well, what else is used, uh, what else is turned into glucose? Sugar, okay? Now, we all know, if we all know this, that if you were to consume an insane amount of sugar, you're most likely going to get diabetes. And you've got to remember, as much as, you know, potatoes and things like that are not as extreme as, you know, like sugary drinks or whatever, because there are other factors into it, not just sugar in terms of fish drink. You've got all those chemicals and other bits that factor into um, diabetes and things like that. But, you know, you will get spikes. And the problem is if you've got spikes, so you've eaten a lot of carbs or eaten a lot of sugar and you're getting these mad spikes and, you know, you're performing on those spikes, you're going to crash. You might last 12 minutes on your 30 minute run and you crash. Can you imagine what that's like when you actually do your fitness test? So you want to aim for consistency, equal level. And for me, that works an 80-20 ratio for me personally. So, you know, and, and also the other thing is, this is probably a bit irrelevant, but I'll state this anyway. The reason why I came to fats, to carbohydrates, is because I looked at how our bodies are actually designed. You look at how our ancestors ate. You've got to remember, the human body's been designing for probably over a million years, um, or at least half a million at the minimum. So, you know, if you look back to, you know, um, the Renaissance era or you go back to medieval times, you know, Victorian times, even you go back and back and back. They didn't have the luxury of vegetables all year round. It was a seasonal thing. It was usually in the summer or spring or, you know, I don't know farming, but you get what I'm trying to say. It wasn't you know, all the time, 24 seven. They used to forage and they you know, used to hunt. So they used to be, uh, I think deer was the most common one or, or venison, um, red deer, I think it was. And, you know, they used to forage mushrooms. So that's why our bodies are designed for more fats and, and protein more than carbohydrates. So please keep that in mind. Um, it's very important. But again, you know, as long as you're not consuming insane amounts of sugar and processed foods, carbohydrates may work for you. And that's, you know, usually will get you over the finish line. I'm going to be extreme into it, but just to give you an idea. Okay, so that's diet out of the way. So sort of last tips. I think at the end of the day, you know, this is going to be, well, for me, it's the by far the hardest part. You're not training for a marathon, okay? So it's going to be more your head than it will be your physical body, okay? Your mind gives up faster than your physical body. Please keep that in mind, okay? Now, just to actually give you a bit of an idea, a lot of people don't know what to run on on a treadmill. 
to hit 2.4 in under uh, either 11 minutes and 11 seconds or under that. So please keep that in mind. If you run on, if the speed is kilometers, and you will know the difference, if you run 13.5 miles per hour on the treadmill, you're going to be hitting the wall unless you're an extremely good runner um, and you can do it for a long period of time. Uh, you know, that is quite fast, even though you don't see me in the car, but it is quite fast. Um, well, for me, anyway, it is. So 13.5 kilometers um, from the get go. So as soon as you, if you say on and then press go, so there was no, you know, the treadmill's not moving, then that will do the 2.4 in about 10 minutes and 48 seconds, something like that. So remember, if you are in the regiment, okay, um, if you're in the regiment, then you need to, I would say, try and aim for the 10 minute mark that or even under 10 minutes. So that could be, you know, that could be about 14 and a half, 15 kilometers uh, per hour. So that's the speed 15. Um, so for me, I'm going to try and go on 13, uh, 13.5 will definitely get under 11, 11, but you want to try and get the best score you can. You don't just want to, cause you've got to remember if, if you, those people competing for your same role, there's only limited spaces. They're going to pick the ones that hit the highest. So please keep that in mind. So, and again, I'm not saying worry about that, but just go for what you can do. If you know you can hit 10, 30 and that's going to be your push, then go for 10, 30. That's still quite good. Okay. So please keep that in mind. And obviously girls, I'm talking about guys specifically for 11 minutes 11 seconds girls you would have to figure that one out on your own because i ain't a girl believe it or not um so yes that's another is there any other tips yeah just you gotta remember your mind is going to be the reason why you win not your physical body okay that's very very important in terms of diet you know keep your um keep your foods uh, natural as possible and you know, eat a free a frequent amount. Don't just starve yourself with one with one dinner. Um, although I do, or one you know meal, even though I do that sometimes. And in regards to the, uh, there was one thing I wanted to talk about, but I've completely forgot. Oh yes, um, the one thing also another forgot to mention on the sort of fitness on the actual physical date. There are days, so like day two in 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 terms of uh, sort of. Uh, what they called strength days or maybe even connected to them i might do a leg day okay it's very important i would definitely recommend doing a leg day um purely because if you if you have stronger legs it can take the load that means your mindset will be better as well so even though that's physical it helps the mindset so i would do things like um barbell squats that's a good one um i would also do a leg press so obviously i would do in the sort of where you lay down and push up that's a great one because then you can get a 90 degree bend in your knees so it won't damage your knees. Obviously, be very careful when you do this. You can damage yourself, but just make sure you get your form right first and then focus on you know, doing progressive overload and things like that. Um, the, the other ones I would do is leg extensions. Leg extensions are a massive killer. If you run, you'll feel sort of like the in, inner bits of your knees, um, the little sort of circular bit that curves around the knee will start hurting, uh, not hurting or feeling like being used. That mainly focuses on that sort of area as well as a little bit other things. So that's a good one. And the last one is like calf raises and things like that or steps. That's another one. Um, and then sort of leg curls as well. Do you know when you sort of lay down, you bring it up at the back of your legs to do, I can't remember what the muscle group is, where you have the quad, the one, the muscle behind it where you sort of blow your arse cheeks. I can't remember what they're called now. I've forgotten. Um, so, yeah, that's another one I would definitely recommend doing. That's a big one. Um, but other than that, guys, there's not much else sort of... Um, uh, sort of experience that I would de- not experience sorry that I uh, that's my tra- train of thought that's my train of thought do it all the time um, there's not many other tips that I have just make sure you keep consistent that's the most important thing and just you know try and have the most positive attitude as well um, and I think on a last note the one thing I'll definitely recommend doing is get the 2.4k run out of your head focus on doing uh, as much as you can as fast as you can um, again not blowing yourself out so you're just failing every time but if you know you're not even nowhere near the 2.4 stop focusing on it step by step by step get a little and you might have seen that picture where there's like a ladder there's two people on a ladder and there's loads of loads of loads of different steps and that guy's like three quarters of the way up and you've got one who's got massive steps and he's right at the bottom still trying to reach the one you know trying to reach the first step so always little is better so please keep that in mind so that was my that was a big mistake for me i was always focusing on that 2.4 2.4 and i'm running the 2.4 and i'm hitting like you know, I'm hitting 16 minutes, or I run for three minutes on 13 and a half, and I'm just knackered, and I'm just, I'm just, but I'm hating myself because it's any other. I've just got to be realistic with myself, and just, um, you know, understand where my physical level is. That's a very important one. You know, get your ego out, 
get your arrogance out, focus on truth, focus on the reality, and just work from there. That's the best thing you can do. But that'll be the end of this video. Otherwise, this is going to be longer than the other ones. It always is flipping long, so I can't ever condense them down. Um, you know, one of my faults of mine. But hey, at least I got some uh, some information for you. <coughs> No, that was the only one. Sometimes it's a, it's a two sneeze on. You, know, you guys probably get that as well. So that'll be the end of this video. I hope it has helped. Um, and the next video will basically be when I actually do my fitness test and I'll talk about whether I passed or failed. And, uh, you know, we'll go from there. So if you guys are going into your fitness test, good luck. Please let us know how it goes. Again, keep that positive mind. You know, keep yourself going. And also when you pass the fitness test, guys, your basic training might not start to another month or two or even further along than that. Always keep up your fitness. That's so important. It's not just a one-time thing. You've got to do the fitness test again once you do ba when you're in the basic training. So you've got to do fitness test twice, and on the second one you're going to do um, sort of shuttle running as well, or what they call bleep tests. That's, that's what's called. So please keep that in mind. But other than that, um, yeah, good luck. Let me know how it goes, and uh, yeah, hope you have enjoyed it and found this useful. But until the next episode, have a good rest of your day. Take care. Bye bye.